Dr. Angie DeMichelle. I'm a medical oncologist and the principal investigator of the Surmount study. You've been asked about the Surmount study today and I wanted to tell you a little bit more about the study to help you understand what it's all about and what would be involved. This study is designed to help us find microscopic tumor cells that may have broken off from the original cancer that you had in the breast. And these cells we believe can actually lie dormant or hibernate in the bone marrow. If we can find these cells, we have the opportunity to give you therapies that might be able to kill these cells and ultimately prevent your cancer from relapsing. So the goal of this study is to prevent breast cancer relapse by targeting these microscopic cells that we believe find their way to the bone marrow. Of course, that means that we're going to need to take a sample of your bone marrow in order to look for these cells. The cells are called disseminated tumor cells, or DTCs. These DTCs are very rare, and the bone marrow provides a place for them that's very welcoming. They are most numerous in the bone marrow, even though they might also be circulating in your blood. We don't yet have the tests that can enable us to find these cells in the blood, so the only way we can find them is in the bone marrow. In order to do that, we need to take a sample of the liquid part of your bone marrow. Your bone marrow is actually a living, breathing organ that is responsible for making all of your blood cells, your white cells, your red cells, your platelets. So it's a very active area. It can be accessed by a small needle being inserted into the back part of your hip bone. This enables us to sample a small amount of the liquid part of the bone marrow. Once we take that sample out, we take it to the laboratory where through a series of different steps, all of the blood cells are removed, leaving behind only the disseminated tumor cells if they are present. So the result of this procedure would be to be able to tell you whether or not DTCs are present in your bone marrow or not. So the good news is that about 90% of the patients we study will have a negative bone marrow and we'll be able to tell you that. For the 10% of patients whose bone marrow does have DTCs, we'll be able to tell you that too and you will be eligible to enter one of our treatment trials targeting these cells. So let's talk a little bit about what's involved in the bone marrow. I know this sounds like a very scary procedure, but in fact it's very straightforward. We can do it right in the office with local anesthesia. There's very little risk associated with this procedure and it's done quite commonly for other kinds of cancer. The procedure itself involves having you lie on your stomach and at that point the nurse practitioner will clean the area right over the back part of your hip bone. Once she's done that, she's going to numb that area up very substantially. She's going to numb the skin as well as the surface of the bone so that you won't feel pain when the needle enters. She'll let you know everything that's happening as she does it. She'll then insert the bone marrow needle into your hip and at that point she will draw out a small amount of fluid. This part might be associated with some stinging or even a little bit of pain down your leg. This is not dangerous. This is a normal part of the procedure. This will take about 30 seconds. Once the needle is removed, she'll put pressure on the area and that should be it. There are some risks associated with this procedure. Anytime a needle enters the skin, there's a possibility of developing infection. And of course, anytime a needle is inserted, there can be bleeding. In addition, while there are very few other structures in the area, it is possible that there can be some damage to the surrounding tissues, and you have to be aware of that risk. The informed consent form that the research coordinator will be going through with you explains all of these risks in details, and you should be sure to ask any questions if any of these risks are unclear. Again, we really appreciate your interest in this study and we hope that it's going to help many women ultimately avoid a relapse of their breast cancer.